I've read about all these illnesses that can happen to your animals and I've just dreaded the days that I was gonna have to deal with them. Yesterday our cow had a calf midday. She did really well and the calf is a beautiful chocolate brown Jersey Dexter cross. You got a beautiful baby cow here. Show me how you're doing. Yeah, you're just a pretty little girl. Just a pretty little girl. You got all those flies bothering you, those nasty flies. This morning though, things took a turn for the worse. When I found her, in the pasture with some very concerning symptoms. First thing we need to do this morning is get that udder worked on. You okay, girl? Walk along, walk on, come on. Walk on. Uh-oh, she's got a real spastic walk here. It could be her legs just fell asleep from laying there too long. But it could be she's actually getting early milk fever. Do you see how spastic her back legs are? She's having a good little nursing while Mama's standing still there. Let me tell you what I'm looking at with Mama Cow this morning and why I'm a little bit worried about her. I want to explain this away with multi-factors, which I think is reasonable, but there is a big dangerous concern <clears throat> with that type of symptoms. And, and how I'd explain it away, or explain it as just being normal as her udder is huge and tight, probably tender, and she's trying to avoid hitting it with her back legs. Plus, she just went through labor yesterday. She's probably extremely sore. The other factor is she was just laying down for a long time and then stood up and her, her legs could kind of be asleep, which is possible. The danger though in this situation is that she might be having early stages of milk fever because we're, any sign of spasticity, or trouble walking or balance can be milk fever, which is essentially a calcium deficiency when the cow makes so much milk. First, we're gonna get her in the milking stand and milk that big udder out, which should help if it's tender. It will help with how full it is, and we'll just get as much as we can out, especially the backside, because the calf has been nursing primarily on the front. And then the next step will be to actually give her an oral, um, I think it's CMPK, which is calcium, magnesium, phosphorus, potassium, in case this is milk fever. It never hurts to give that oral CMPK, and it, if this is early milk fever, it might uh, be early enough in the process that it actually could prevent it from getting worse. And then if it progresses at all, IV CMPK. I'm not worried about the calf this morning. The calf isn't out of the woods on her first few days, which can be kind of the most vulnerable time, but the calf looks really good this morning, he's nursing walking great, running around. It's really nice to have pigs again. Really, really nice. Where's that baby? The baby. Where's the baby? See that over there. Oh. Hi, Mama. There she is. Hey, little girl. Hey, little girl. Little girl, you laying in the sun? Are you having trouble, or are you...
Come on, let's go. Come on. <laughs> I'm not sure. I want to watch her. Let's get you out of the sun and see how you're doing because you look kind of floppy this morning. Come on, let's go. She should be able to stand up though. If she want, what I'm saying is I think she just doesn't want to. At least I'm hoping that's what it is. Good job. So I was just sleeping. Well, you were right. She had me worried for a minute. She oh. was like put, not putting her legs down, but I think it's just. I think she's just sleepy. Come on, mama. Your baby's coming too. I know, come on, your baby's coming too. Come on. Come on. <laughs> For the record guys, if you're new to keeping cows, this is one of the most dangerous things you can do with a mama cow is grab the calf and carry it. Sometimes it's unavoidable, you just have to be aware. Sometimes the mothers flip and can kill you. Come on mommy. Let's go. Come on mommy. It's okay. Come on mama. Come on mama. Careful on that hill. Come on. So we got Alice last year after she'd already been in milk for a month and her udder was not this big. It is just gargantuan. It's really too big to be honest. But she, we did get her from a dairy, albeit an organic grass fed dairy, it's still just huge. Alright, that went pretty well. She's right there, we're not taking her. Come here. Come on, let's go. Come on. Hey, Alice. Come on, Alice. I did. Alright, we got her in. Kind of by shoving her, honestly. On a scale from 0 to 10, how stressed are you about the, the cow? 2. Oh, good. What would I be stressed about? She's doing, I mean, other than getting in the stanchion. I don't blame her. I'm talking I'm, about that little stumbly gate. Oh, that seven. We're gonna six. find out if she's if it's mostly her udder. I th she could be sore from pushing that cap. I mean, I I don't I don't I think we should still give her the CMPK and keep you stumbled really, around. You couldn't walk stumble. after some of them. Well, some of them I lost a lot of blood, so I had a hard time. I had to stay in bed for like a good week. Well, the paste won't fix it if it's really bad. You really have to get the vet out here to do. That's um, what I'm saying. Yeah, to do an IV. I mean, the main thing isn't fear, right? It's vigilance, education. I mean, if we lost her, I'd be devastated. But uh, that little stumble did worry me quite a bit. Okay, will you hand her her feed, please? Here you go, girl. Good job getting in the stand. Sorry that was stressful. But your baby's right here, I promise. We're not going to take your baby away. Not until she's all grown up. You are a pro milker. <laughs> You're so much better at it than I am. Well, I milk every day, Arthur. I milk the goats every, well, almost every day. I have four hands. It is pouring out of this one and pouring out of this one. And honestly, I don't even mind because she needs the relief. She's doing okay in the milk stand. She's a little unsteady on her feet, which is a symptom of milk fever. So I think um, when Arthur gets back, we can give her the paste. Typically, though, if they really have it, is not going to help that much, so I'll probably go ahead and call my vet even right here in just a minute. But her udder needs some serious relief, so we're just going to do all these things. This is kind of what you deal with when you get high um, volume breeds of milk cows. Are these issues after calving? Though any mammal, maybe not humans, but most mammals, can get milk fever. Um, it's just not so common, but it's common in higher producing Jersey cows. And by looking at that udder, she's a high-producing Jersey gal. Okay, I just finished. Y'all, I got four gallons of colostrum. And look at how much better her udder looks. So much nicer. Look at that. She could hardly walk. I really think that's what was going on, is that her udder was just so full. She was, like, tripping up on it when she was walking. Is that better? I bet that is relieving for her. Yeah, that baby can't get all that out. I wouldn't take it if it could. I let it have every drop of that colostrum. That baby cannot get all that milkies. 
All right, I'm gonna shut the barn door and let her out. Look, she knows it's time. Hold on, Mama. Free to go. Usually she gets right out. You can do it. There you go. Good job. Yeah, we're gonna get a mat for that. There you go. Yeah, so she is pretty unsteady. She's super wobbly. I'm calling the vet right now. She's just all stumbly. My Jersey milk cow calved yesterday about noon. And today she is very stumbly on her feet. And I was hoping that you could come and do intravenous CMPK or if that's what you think is best. But if you could call me back. Okay, so the way the system works is you that sends them an emergency page and then they call you back. I'm going to go freeze all of this colostrum, and you guys can keep an eye on her while I go do that. So, talk to the vet. We told him that she's just a little bit stumbly and that we have oral CMPK to give her. And he recommended him just go ahead and coming out and giving her the intravenous CMPK. He'll be here in about an hour. He's coming right away, which I'm pretty excited about. And sometimes he can't, but I don't know. I've never had him out for an emergency. She's down here checking on Alice. She can't even get up. She tried to get up and she flopped over. Then she tried to get up again and she fell forward. So I'm just so thankful I went ahead and called the vet. Oh, now you're up. <sighs> that was really scary. She was laying down and tried to get up and fell over on her side. I hope and she fell releasing. forward. Yeah, he should be here. Milk fever is progressive and there's three stages. In the third stage, you, which is when a lot of people find their cows, is they find them down and they can't stand. You're welcome. What is the show? I have no idea. Can Julian? And then I saw her eating hay, finally. Okay. Just... <laughs> I just realized. Wait a second. It says that we adore this cow. Oh, yeah. She calved yesterday about noon, you said. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, she's stumbling. She's shifting weight. When I was milking her, she was just so wobbly. Okay. Hey, sweetheart. Give me a salad. Are you feeling a little weird, kiddo? Hmm? Are you feeling a little weird? There you go. I'm just going to listen to you real quick, okay? That's your baby right here. Mm -hmm. See, she's still there. Mm -hmm. This way so you can watch the baby, okay? Jersey cow that's mm -hmm. had multiple calves, like they're just really, really susceptible to it. It's mm -hmm. very common. Yeah. And um, so uh, any of that shaky stuff after the fact, her heart rate's up really high as well. Mm -hmm. um, we always start with that because a lot of times the cow, they're not fully down and out and unable to get up. They just have kind of this uh, almost subclinical. They're not quite there. But... Tomorrow morning, she might be totally down. Mm -hmm. uh, she starts to milk heavy. So, a um, couple things that can go with having low calcium, uh, blood calcium, retained placenta, mm -hmm. um, a twisted stomach, displaced abomasin. That sounds really good. Both sides are normal. I don't have any evidence of that. Um, so, I'm just going to palpate her real quick and make sure her uterus is uh, shrinking down some. Not bad for a hot And easy. Yeah, her cervix is closing down. It's normal, uh, normal thick kind of they call it lochia or locia. I'm gonna go in her rectally and I'm gonna feel on top of everything and feel her uterus and make sure that it's shrinking down to a normal size, not full of a lot of fluid or um, 
any signs of infection. It feels nice and normal. I didn't know I get the back ones emptied out. She was just so unstable on her feet, I felt like I should get her out. I'm going to treat this as, um, as no fear. Um, we'll give her, um, she is eating some, you said. Mm -hmm. Great. Hey, okay, but no grain. No grain, okay. Yeah. Katie, okay, we'll run that calcium. Let's also just run her some dextrose as well. So the dextrose just to give her some energy. Sometimes we'll have some of these cows that have tipped over into ketosis. Yeah. Um, you know, they've not, they're not physically able to eat enough to meet all the nutrient demands of making milk. And so um, just to kind of make sure she's starting on the good foot. I usually use my whole fist to kind of get, um, hold things off or just your hand, but you can see it filling up there. Yeah. Big old fatty. Cannot pull her head out. Okay, right in there. So the needle goes into the vein and then there's, you can see the blood We just run off out. the needle, yeah. This is the dextrose? This is calcium. Okay. Now if she needs it, this again, Arthur is a nurse and yeah. I think he could totally do this. He could totally do this. Can you leave some of the supplies with us? Yeah, we can okay. do that. She is just not her normal self. So she was stumbling around too much, so she, he's actually going to put the IV in a different spot. Sorry, two sticks. This one goes quick, okay? Yeah, this one goes quick. Okay. If we milk her, let's just tie her. I'm not gonna milk her right now. All right, so this is uh, I don't know, it's just to get the product name or not. Oh, wow. It's oh. boba calc. It's uh, it looks like a big. <laughs> It's basically like a big chalk marker. It's two different forms. Sidewalk of, chalk. Yeah, it looks like two, <laughs> two different forms of calcium. One is quickly absorbed and the other is slowly absorbed. Oh, okay, wow. It's coated in a fat powder, so when it hits her saliva, it turns to really slip. Uh, it tends to really slip. It comes with its own little um, balling gun to put it in. <laughs> so you might get to see me fail at that a couple times because sometimes it takes two or three times to get it to go down the wow. throat. It'll just help her to continue to have a high calcium load over the next 24 hours so that um, we don't want that dip back down and she gets weak again. I usually will let them start to chew a bit on my fingers. All right, good. And we'll slide this in gently over the back of her tongue. Okay, so they'll take their lip up if they swallow it. There she goes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll get your, we'll get your little one. It really does. I mean, I get her calcium, blood calcium up, basically, you know, really, really fast, and then we've kind of got to rely on her to improve her diet and maintain it all on her own. The whole goal is to get her feeling well enough to take care of herself, essentially, mm -hmm. right? Is it okay to keep her in the barn and just give her hay right now? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. That's perfectly fine. When would you recommend us give more calcium? Yeah, so what we've given her there um, for 24 hours, it, okay. should, it should continue to give some support. If she's eating, drinking, and looks good and steady, I wouldn't give her any more. Okay. Um, as long as she's, like, she's got access to a mineral and feed. So milk fever is, you know, clinically, it's, it's when your, the level of calcium in your blood drops down uh, beneath a, a normal level. And all of the normal processes in your body that use calcium, muscle contraction for everything, for your muscles, your skeletal muscles to hold you up, your heart, um, your GI tract motility, uh, your ability to pr produce urine, just normal movement in your body is compromised. And so a lot of times those cows, um, when they give birth, they, um, and they're creating this milk, which is a very calcium intense process, um, their blood is, is basically starved of it. Your body usually calls upon the calcium reserved in your bones. And so you will pull calcium out of there to support your needs. What happens in these dairy cows is uh, we've learned that it's that last um, bit of parturition when she's pregnant. That is, that is one of the key times that their body becomes primed um, to pull calcium out of their bones. And so we can actually improve this drastically. Um, you would think in your head, you know, I've got a cow who has low calcium, I should give her more calcium, right? It's actually the complete opposite. So in the last uh, two to three months of pregnancy, um, there are some, there's a diet change that we can make that will train the cow 
to be pulling calcium out of her bones. And so if we can feed those cows these certain minerals in the last bit of pregnancy, we will train her body um, to be primed to, uh, to pull calcium out mm -hmm. um, of their bones. That's a good thing that she's um, pretty responsive to me. And uh, she's not wanting to fall over. If I kind of push on her, she can catch herself. Okay, good. And those are good things. She's not too weak. Um, but I, um, you know, we'll let her just rest, recoup, and let all this kind of normalize. Okay. And uh, make sure to offer her plenty to eat and drink. Dr. Jernigan just left, and she already looks 10 times better. She's not even like stumbly at all on her feet. And I'm just so thankful for that vet. He just taught us so much in the 20 minutes, 30 minutes that he was here. I know you guys are gonna ask how much the vet visit cost him and tell you it was $262. And Are you serious? Yeah. That's so good. I know, I actually feel like that's an extremely low number considering we called him, he literally got here in an hour and 15 minutes and did what he did. And um, 90 of that, I know for at least 90 of that was just his um, fee for driving out here. And he left us uh, more medicine to give her. I feel like $262 to save her life is worth every penny. That's not hyperbole. Cows will die from milk fever because it, it progresses. It can happen in like five hours. It can happen in 24 hours, but they will end up down and they will end up dying. I've dreaded the day I had to deal with milk fever, to be honest. I've read about all these illnesses that can happen to your animals and I've just dreaded the days that I was going to have to deal with them. But the truth be told, you don't know how to deal with them until they happen to you. And so people ask me for advice all the time about this illness or that and I'll say, I don't really have any experience with that. Here's you know some websites you could go to. And I've always been really thankful to say, I don't really have experience with that. This is the day we've dreaded. I have too. I've thought about this so many times. So I mean, many times. even just walking out this morning, I was just watching her, watching her. She's laying down. I'm like, is she going to get up? She got up, but then she was stumbling. I was mm -hmm. like, oh crap, here Ours we go. I was going to notice it first. But you know, the fortunate thing about this whole situation is that we caught it really early because a lot of people catch it. You know, if you're gone all day or if you have beef cow cattle and they're out in the field, you catch it when they're down. And at that point, you're, it's a matter of hours before they'll end up dying. And m most of them, if you catch it early, you can pop them right back with the calcium. But if they've been down a long time, they may, they may not uh, come back. <laughs> Look at her. She's not... She was doing that shuffling thing nonstop for the past stop. all morning and then into the afternoon. Since, since this morning. And she's not doing it at all right now. I feel so much better that he checked her all over too. I know, I actually was thinking like we could have probably dealt with this ourselves, but then when he got here and started doing like a full on assessment of her, I was like, you know what? I'm glad he's here because it could be something else. And I love the fact that he didn't just like treat her for uh, milk fever, but did everything and did this this big physical evaluation. Well, he took his time to talk to us too. Yeah, he took a long time to talk to us. I just really like our vet. We're ending this video with a huge sense of relief and yes. thankfulness. thankfulness. Um, and we're just really happy that things turned out the way they did. We're still going to watch her so closely mm -hmm. um, over the next couple days, but we're just really thankful. Yep. And we have what we need in case she gets sick again in the next few days. So thanks for joining us, folks. It's been another great day on the homestead, and we'll see you tomorrow. In the next video. Goodbye.